Hello guys, and welcome back to a new chapter of how to. In this case, we're gonna be working over the curve node, and we're gonna be seeing a little bit of how GraySQL works in Substance Designer in order to make uh, shapes. Now, if you wanna do shape like these ones that you have in my 3D viewport, the curve node is gonna be essential for it in order to have these levels of detail where you have, you know, all these steps. Now, before doing that, let's see how it works and how does Grayscale works in Substance Designer. So, in here I have a circular shape I created, yes, quite simple. We got a big circle, we subtract it as uh, another size of the circle, and then we do a second subtract, but we lower the opacity to 2.5. So, right now this is the result we get, the curve node is not doing anything yet. So this is how we get it, and if we look into the to the viewport, we're gonna be able to see that we have three kind of grayscales here. We have white, we have gray, and then we have black. So Substance Designer works in a way where white is one and zero is black. Being zero, no information, and being one, maximum amount of information we can have. Now, we never want to have one in our grayscale or our high map, and we never want to have a zero, meaning completely black, because we aren't having or way too much detail or non detail, and whichever is the case, it's not gonna grant us um, the best uh, options to work. Now, what happens when we blur something like this? You can see. I use the initial shape and this is after I blur in my 2D viewport. If I take it to my 3D viewport, you're gonna notice it's changed a lot. And that's because we are creating a gradient. Let me show you. So initially we have this image, yes? With sharp edge. If we get zoom we zoom into it, here we can see the pixels that they are sharp, they are just white. But if we change the image, we see they start to have this gradient which comes from the totally white value we had till the next one. So if we want to work with the curve node, yes, as I stated before, we need to have something with a gradient, yes, we need to work with gradients, we need to work with something that is already blurred. Now how does curve node do, uh, work? Basically it inputs a grayscale image and it allows us to control it by different steps with a Bezier curve. So we can actually control this, this, the gradient we created with the use of this Bezier curve. So I can start, I know, adding some details here, or sharp and sharpening them by just taking in consideration our Bezier curve. So you see there I created a new step. I can take it outwards or inwards. Let's see if we can do it around here. Now let's do. So we can control this information as much as we want it. We can take it up or down. We can create bigger or smaller. Yes, bigger. And we can work with this all day long. Now, this is very useful, especially when creating some ornamentals. Now, if, if you can look at this from close enough you're gonna see the difference we have between not using within using the curve node and not using it at all see here is the difference now taking in consideration this you're not affecting a specific area yes you are affecting a specific value if you see when I was working with the, uh, with the curve node before I was watching into this inner part of the circle but if I zoom out there's other details that have been created here, you know, and that's because the the value of my grayscale here, yes, is similar to the one I'm affecting here. So the effect our curve node is gonna have is gonna be not single but multi-value. Now, how can we take from something like this to something like this? Well, creating something like this create, uh, takes some more like combined. Uh, method and skills. Now, before we get into the curve part, we need to understand that making these shapes is a, take a lot of uh, of control of the negative spaces. 
so first we need to get a design and after we get the design we start shaping yes our symbol with simple subtractions and equations like for example this one we get a, a star with a polygon 2 and we are subtracting a small disk in the center here we are using again polygon 2 but to make a triangle and with splatter circular we make a circle with these triangles and subtract it to our main shape so we keep adding and subtracting value of this and finally again we blur it and once we blur it we start creating our details now let me plug this into the end of the line and you will see the difference now here we managed to create the different levels and we can control them we can still control them no harm done and we can change them as much as we want now we can keep on working but we can keep on working with it now we can keep on working with it but personally I prefer that if we're gonna make different shapes yes with different values we split them what do I mean for example I have in this section of the graph in this equation I have three curved nodes meaning that they have three shapes that are built differently and aside and they are being affected by our curved node individually yes so in this case for example we have a, we have a polygon 2 with a really nice gradient and we use the curved node in order to create all this amount of uh, steps then we process it as we need to in order to combine it finally with our main shape now picture this we cannot only control the grayscale of our shapes by using the levels or a curve or even a gradient map we can use it we can do it by also doing it with a blend uh, node in this case the add so remember the add blending mode is one that adds information to our image as the name says so if I put this on one it's gonna take the whole value yes of my initial image that would be this one but if I leave it as it was before I'm gonna get low the lower uh, lower information from it meaning a more dark and grayscale from it meaning the height is gonna be completely different and as you can see I did it once here and I did it a second time here to create another shape this one a little bit more particular by using just a disk and a uh, flutter circular to create my kind of uh, flower shape then making a subtract and using an edge detect sorry using an add and then using an edge detect in order to take the amount of the, the, the edge I want and after that I blur it going throughout a uh, curve again and then I want to have a transform to be able to scale it as much as you want without having any trouble or change in the previous steps. That's usually how you would use this. And this allows us for a lot more things, not only creating simple shapes, we can create complex ceilings with this. In fact, when you are working with ceilings, let me tile this so you can see it better, you will have to use your curve node and there's no dispute in it, you will have to because every single part of it or most of it is being built by it by the curve node so as I said before for example in here I start creating my ground for my material and after I use a bevel to create you know this kind of edges here I use my curve node to add some more detail if I remove this from here you will see the shape changes but if I add the curve node it stays as much as I aligned here like it now another way of lowering yes the value of our grayscale is by using our histogram range yes how can we do that well histogram range has two variables the range and the position so the range will take us will tell how much like how much white or gray scale do we want to have in our image do we take our range to maximum and then lower the position or increase the position you will see that we will take every value yes of the gray scale as the spectrum of our image and lowering or even upgrading it into a zero or a one as you can see here now i use it here just to lower 
to the, the ground of what I was building. And of course this moves on, here are some experiments I was doing before. But I started using it again with all these like frames I want to have, you know. This frame around here is the one we are looking at right now. If I change this here, we're going to get again a re different result. And just by using the kernel, we are doing something more like man-made instead of something just halfway through. So this is basically how it works. And as you can see here, it's a very powerful tool that can allow you to create different and singular steps on your gradients. In fact, I think it's one of the most powerful nodes inside Substance Designer because it allows you to create detail with no effort at all. You just need to you just need to have a gradient and start playing with the Bezier curve in order to create our our shape. In this finite image, we can see uh, for what it is for me a good example of using the grayscale information of Substance Designer in order to create a shape we need uh, for our material. In this case, maybe this edge is way too much white, but it was going to be lower down than when I add detail. But if you see, there's something quite peculiar about everything I did. Everything has steps, everything has height, and the way it started building, it's the way it has been created. So I first created the lower part, and as you can see, it's the darkest of, of, of them all. And then we have this higher part, which is the higher of all. Now this is not just by mere coincidence, it's something I planned when making this material and it's something that you should all take in consideration when working with materials like this one. Unfortunately this was a project I wasn't able to finish but I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish later in a tutorial. But So you can have in consideration this with, with better understanding of how Grayscale works. You're gonna be able to create similar shapes to this one. So I hope you enjoyed the video and you understand now how Grayscale works in Substance Designer. It's something really important if we want to talk about materials and in fact I'm going to do a completely different video that is going to be 100% focused on this theme. On the other hand, I also uh, hope you could learn and understand how the curve node uh, works. And just to make myself clear, don't, don't close your mind to it. Like, let it flow, work with it, play with it especially. Let the node help you get the shapes you want, but don't overwhelm yourself with I'm not getting the right shape. Try different things, look different pants. There's many things in this material that I didn't do just using the curve node because it would be madness. So open your mind and try new tools in order to create 